Three games, three wins. How much does that one mean, your first win here? Uh, all of them mean a lot because the, the first one was my first game as a Liverpool manager. The second one was my first home game. And this is the first uh, big win, I think, if you want to call it like this. So all of them mean a lot to me. What would be your assessment of, of where it went wrong today? Compliment for Liverpool and for the players how they finish and score great goals. It's quite simple. I think we were in the game. I think it was equal level, head to head till half an hour, and then yeah, we make two big mistakes. You made a change at half time. Casemiro came off. Was that anything to do with an injury or was that purely to, to change things up? Uh, you know, when you are 2 0 down against Liverpool, their quality is um, they are very dynamic, especially in midfield area. So we brought someone on with legs. Uh, that was Toby Collier. And the change you made in the second half, it, it didn't go down well with the crowd here. How would you explain that to the United fans, why you made the change you did? I think it's a good question from you. Because um, uh, first start from Sirixi, first start from Carnaccio, and yeah, then you decide uh, to bring players on uh, uh, who has, can have an impact. Diallo, he deserved it, uh, he can have an impact, but then bring a player off who is not used to 90 minutes. Just a word about your, your forward line. Luis Diaz gets two, Mo Salah makes two, then scores one. It, it, it seems as if you've inherited this group of players. It, it's, it's like the greatest riches any manager could inherit. I would emphasise today more on the work rate without the ball from these three and from our three midfields that kept on running, kept on running and kept on arriving in the duels. So that was for me very, very good to see uh, that they could do this today. I'm tempted to ask what's changed because on the face of it, not a lot. I think we look a bit more secure defensively. I think we were a lot more controlled our game today. Um, you know, obviously three now, and yeah, it could have been more. The clean sheet's massive for us. You know, when you come away to your rivals like Man United, then it's so important to keep a clean sheet. And that's what the manager said before the game. You know, the first objective today is to keep the clean sheet, and then we've got the quality on the pitch to score goals, and I think we proved that. Well, there's an awful lot to dissect with you both uh, after that, starting with the goals, because Manchester United as Eric Ten Hag alluded to, were their own worst enemies. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a bit of a shocker. He, he sort of dressed it up after the game, saying half an hour we were good. They were OK for half an hour, but then two massive mistakes, I think, from Casemiro and, and, and got dragged at half-time. He gave the ball away 13 times in the, in, in the first half alone, Casemiro. And we'll have a look at him here, Mark. I mean, he, we know what he's done in his career, but it just looked he was he was miles off it today. Again, he's in a good position for a number six, of course. And you see it comes back to him here now. You know, he's got options. What does he do? Can he go to the can he go to, to the right back, take a touch to Masraoui? Dallow's really high up as, as the left back as well. The last thing he can do is take this first time. He can take a touch, he's got more time, he thinks now Manchester United are buying in trouble. Look at this. Numbers going further. There's three, three three defenders and of course five attackers. This is at home to one of the you know the form teams of, of the Premier League. And of course they're queued up at the back post. Brilliant ball from Salah and, and Diaz comes in off the wing and it's a it's a fantastic header. And, and I'm afraid it's Casemiro again, you know, he's had such a bad day at the office. Again, you talk about the press, you know, Arnold Slot talks about his press. Diaz presses from the front, he nicks the ball off Casemiro and, and again, it's, it's, it's poor from him. He should get it away to maybe Xerxes in a way. And I look at Martinez here as, as a centre-half. He sees Diaz once, he has another look at him again, Mark, twice. Now, he should be man-to-man -man inside the box. You know, space doesn't score goals, but players do. I think he's got to lock on to Diaz and, and Frank, the third goal is very similar. Yeah, I think some things are individual errors. I think those two particularly. But I think when you look at it, it's just a structural problem with Manchester United. Kobe Mane is receiving his ball, he's back to goal. Six players already beyond the ball. So he's got to try and wriggle when he can't. And all of a sudden, within a second, you're four against two and you're trying to recover. And against the team, that's one of Liverpool's strengths, always has been how quickly they, they execute those kind of counter-attacks. They just left it open. And then this kind of summed up, really, the, the game for them in terms of this is straight away on the kickoff and then you make that mistake. Now, without getting too individual about it, I think that's probably as much of a mental issue at that point where you've just conceded, you know that you're conceding in the dangerous moments, you have to play the safer pass to go back or take another option, and that summed up where Manchester United were in that period of the game. Is it, it's interesting that you use the word structural when, when you talked about the third goal and where Mania was compared to everybody else, because when you compare and contrast that to Liverpool's midfield today, you have seen structure in, in every phase of play, really. Yeah, well, I think Andy Robertson alluded to it then in terms of looking safer uh, defensively, more secure defensively. And I think you want to control games and you want to be more secure. A lot of that comes from the centre of the pitch and how you set up. Now, we, we saw KB Mainu looking like he didn't have any options, whereas the balance in Liverpool's midfield today was completely different. And they've talked a lot about buying a, a top-class number six, but 
the way they play today, they don't necessarily need that because of their setup. So you have McAllister and Graven Birch were those sort of two next to each other as two sixes, and Sobersly took up this position higher on the left hand side. You see, there's an acres of space there if he chooses to take that pass. And now, very quickly, through playing very well through the lines, they're going six against four against Manchester United, and they're in big trouble. And we know when they have that quality, we know Liverpool have been capable of this for, for many years, playing through teams at pace. But there seemed a bit more balance to their midfield today than what sometimes Liverpool may have had previously, where there was a lot of rotations and a lot of different movements. Here, you generally see there the two players behind the ball, so it's like behind the midfield giving them an issue. And when you have those two players and those connections and the distances are always good, they rotate off each other, they have a good understanding of each other. But if they were to turn the ball over at any of these moments, those two midfielders are always backing up play. So it's, it's, it's smart players, dynamic players, as the manager said there, there was a lot of energy in their game. But you see again here, one can receive, those two are close together. Sobis Lundman makes a run just to open up the space. And what you want to do with these things when you change play is get your, your best wingers 1v1 with defenders. So I thought the balance was fantastic. We're very happy, the small tweaks, very smart, I think, from the manager there. He's come into a, a machine of a team with a lot of talent and a dynamic uh, style. And there's a small change that you think leads you into seeing what you see there. And I, and I think it was interesting today as well because a lot of people have been talking about the different style, more passes, more build-up. We see that in the first two games here against Ipswich and Brentford where they've had bigger control of a game. But they've come up against what you might see as a potentially more difficult opponent at Old Trafford today. And I think their decision was made to go, OK, we're going to have that structure, but when we can play through, when we can miss out that press from Manchester United, play through them, because you can play through Manchester United when they play like they did today, and they found a really good way of doing it without losing balance to the team. Just, just on that midfield again, and, and Shabozlai playing a, a role very similar to, to the one that you play, but, but from you as a midfielder and from you as a, as a coach, will that, will that have taken virtually ever since Slot got there to work on that? And that, and how much is it coaching? How much is it individual? Well, it's both. I think you need good players and you need players of intelligence um, and attributes. And as he talked about their energy to be able to make the movements and to continuously do so through a game of that level. So I, I think it's both. It, it obviously helps having good players of a good understanding. And they've been well coached. Not, let's not forget what the, the previous manager has done over a long period of time. So those tweaks would have been done on a training ground. And then you obviously need the players to take on information and also react to a game. You know, when you are saying we can be a little bit flexible within a certain structure, you're understanding that if McAllister, and I'm sure it will happen where he will just want to, you know, he will see a moment to release himself, then it's up to the other midfielders to balance off that. Man Manchester United's midfield has been an issue for a long time. It's been an issue ever since Eric Ten Hag arrived and wanted to sign Frankie de Jong. Didn't get Frankie de Jong, mm. right? They've tried again with their midfield this <laughs> summer. Do, do the hierarchy need to take some blame here in that the man that they've chased all summer, apparently, in Agate, arrives on deadline day, mm. can't be registered, and he's waving at the fans rather than playing in front of them. I mean, it's not all on Ten Hag, this, is it? No, it's not on Ten Hag, but you look at the, you look at the squad today, you look at the bench, even they make changes, the, the, the bench is, is, is wafer thin. They've made a lot of investment. This guy should be starting today. He, he definitely should be. And again, you speak, to, you know, Dan Ashworth's gone in there, Jason Wilcox, they are people above... But have they come in too late? Should this been done? Who do you blame? Do you blame Ten Hag? Do you blame the powers of B above? But at the same time, Jim Radcliffe was there as well. You know, all them people, the you know, the hierarchy, the directors, you know, when they're watching that today, 3 0 was was it could have been a lot worse. Andy Robertson said after the game, you know, 3 0 was 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 respectable scoreline for Man United, because it could have been four, five, six. They had so many chances. But a guard should should be should have been registered. You said they're chasing them all summer. He should be he should have been playing today. The the other the other contrast as well between the two teams, yeah, the clips you show of of Liverpool is every time they get the ball in the final third, it was slick and the passes went to who they were intended to. And you again you go back and contrast that to Manchester United in the final third. Yeah, well, I think when you have balance within your team, we just spoke about Liverpool there, then, then I think it's much easier to sort of construct attacks. With Manchester United, a lot of their attacks, and they have been for a while, very quick and fast-paced. They're moments that happen, and they've got fast players and talented players at the top end of the pitch. But when you attack quickly, it's sometimes hard to follow up play when you're not structured. Patterns of play don't matter so much in these moments. They're off the cuff. And Xerxes, as you see there, is a, a supposedly a number nine, slightly a false nine, who's not following up plays. You'll struggle to score goals if it's like that. And again, when you see here, they had a few moments where you go, OK, that's just a bad decision from Garnacho. Now, we're early season, and, and he's a good young player. P young players will make those sort of mistakes. But this with Anana here, can we make angles? Can you support him if you to play? That's a lack of connection through the team there. Even though he's getting a clap, it's, it's, a, it's a bad connection. <laughs> Yeah, it's frustrating, I suppose, for Man United because they have got the players. Like, Bruno's probably one of their best players. And today, he was, 
I know Miles off again. He's got options here. Ganacho's right. I think it's the easy option. But I think Bruno Fernandes is easy enough to play that through the middle for Zerksi. And he's through in a 1v1 situation. Again, it's the wrong choice in the final third. And it's... I don't know, Rashford, you know, I could go through the team, Mark, to be honest. But, but, but Rashford need to, is frustrating as well. down, then? I don't, I don't know. It's also, you're probably right. The word rushed. Everything seems to be rushed. The top teams you see, Liverpool, the great example is Frank Moore 4. Everything seems to be calm in the final third. All them sort of snippets we show in Man United, it's always rushed. It's always like, you know, the one you show with Garnacho and, and Xerxes should be arriving into the box. Like, I know Ten Hag, you would, well, I think I don't know him that well, but I think he should be doing patterns of play on a daily basis. Xerxes should be arriving onto that. And Sir Garnacho does a blind pass into that space. He's miles off it. Is it a harsh and unfair question to ask if Liverpool look like they have more of a plan under slot after three games hmm. than United do under Ten Hag going in there? Is that is that well, harsh it, and unfair? I don't think it's harsh at all. You know, you know. I think the questions will be asked big time over the next couple of weeks. International break now. He's got a two week break. There'll be lots of questions. I, mean, I know there's a lot of Man United fans that are really angry with that performance, with the result. And as you say, it's not like he's just come through the door like Slot. He's been there for three years. I think Slot has inherited a better team and better individuals and a better player. Liverpool are a better team than Manchester United. I don't think too many people would disagree with that. So Ten Hag himself has said that. Yeah, yeah. Ten Hag. Yeah, and he, he spent a lot of job, Frank, yeah. he spent a lot of money as well. Well, he has. And, and, and in terms of recruitment and big signings and big players, there's some that have really not come off for yeah. them. And as a manager, and I've been in that seat, you understand that he'll be going, well, if my, you know, I need players to be able to play. If I want more control of a game, I need to have... If, if I want to be a more of a pressing machine as a team, I need energy in my team. I need centre-backs that can cover. There are so many parts to it. So he will have his reasons for that. So I've got sympathy for that. But the, the problem is when you look at that, and it's, it's, a, it's a well-spoken thing about Manchester United, is that you don't quite know what they are, what, what sort of team they are. With Liverpool and the top teams, you generally know. And that's a, that's a, that's a real... Um, th th there's a lot to that. You have to recruit well. You have to be aligned as a club, with a manager of an idea. Can we help him and back him? And that's what's been missing. There's a bigger picture than just pointing a, a finger at the manager. But I think when you do look at some of those tactical details there, when they're repetitive, you go, well, you've got to find a solution because that is your job. Andy Kerr with Eric Ten Hag for being sports. Eric, this is the first time you've lost a game against Liverpool here. What went wrong today? Um, I think um, start, but well, um, I think was okay. Uh, despite there were one big chance, it was disallowed goal. Uh, we are uh, wrong in the organi um, uh, organization. But then uh, we came in the game and uh, we improved the game, but then we make a big mistake. And I have to say, they had so clinical, uh, great finishes. And I think all the three goals are great finishes from Liverpool, I have to say. So, the serve in. They all seemed similar in that they were transition goals. Is, is that something you can identify and can you change anything? It's difficult because when you uh, say individual errors, when you make them like this, then you know against Liverpool they are very good in the turnovers. And I think the structures were right in this moment, um, especially uh, the first goal, um, the second goal as well. The third goal you can debate, I think we, we were not so right over the left side in the rest defence. but. Uh, the first two goals uh, you can't change when you make such mistakes against a good team as Liverpool uh, they will kill you and um, I think all over uh, they took the, the chance is very clinical so the serve in for them Was the Casemiro change was that tactical or was he injured? Uh, it, it was tactical uh, because we were 2-0 down and then you know against Liverpool had uh, the midfield will be open, then you need legs. Uh, therefore, we brought a, a guy in, a young player, but he has legs, and uh, to keep the midfield closed. The timing isn't helpful to, to go into the international break on the back of a defeat, with so many players away now on international duty. What can you change during this next fortnight? <laughs> no, nothing. Eh? We have to wait till the players return, but then we will continue. I think. The team stick together uh, till the end, they fought together till the end and uh, they show resilience uh, till the end. So that is a good point, that is what we have to take, but we have to improve uh, going into the season and to, we have to step up. Thanks for coming out today, Eric. Appreciate it. Arne, you know what this game means uh, for Liverpool fans, for United fans. How was it won tactically on the pitch? 
Oh, I don't think you win games by tactics, you win games by work rate, and that's what we showed today. Uh, all the players were involved in our press, uh, and our work rate without the ball was outstanding. And only if you bring this, then the quality of the players can make the difference, and that's the way uh, we won the game today. No, Stias, it seems like as if he has a new lease of life, uh, he's scoring goals and he's been in the right positions. Why do you think that's working for him? Uh, I, of course, I don't know why, why, or if I didn't even know that he didn't score that many goals. For me, Lucio uh, Diaz is a is a goal scorer and he's a, he's an enormous threat for every opponent. So why his performance was really good today is because the team played really well. And uh, like I said, if you if you play that good together and you work that hard together, then individuals can make the difference, and we have a few of them that can make the difference if uh, if we work this hard. We mentioned how important is that game. So how was your experience of it, and how did you find the, the atmosphere here and winning the game? Yeah, it's, it's always nice to win the game, but you don't enjoy the atmosphere till maybe five minutes before the end, uh, because we also saw the second half that maybe we were stronger and we should have won this game. We, we won it, but we should have maybe scored more goals. But we needed Allison two times in the second half to make a real important save for us not to concede, because we all know how things can change here at Old Trafford if they can score a goal. So I had to stay on top of them, and unfortunately we stayed... Uh, Really focused and concentrated, that's why we could win with 3 0. Two weeks to enjoy it, thank you so much. Uh, reaction instantly, Mikel, to what you've seen from Manchester United? Instantly? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Close to a capitulation from United side, uh, very worrying because we are at the beginning of the season. Normally, mentally, you're fresh, and the one condition to go into the derby is to have the fighting spirit, you know, the togetherness. And we didn't see that. In the action, we didn't see that in the tactic. The team was spread, very open. It was easy for Liverpool. Like you said, they didn't have to work hard to achieve and three goals. They scored three goals this afternoon. So it's a big concern. You know, last year, Coventry was almost a loss. Well, it was a loss. It was Crystal a loss. Palace after. I mean, it's, for me, it's a continuity of I, I, last I mean, season. Eric Ten Hag has come into this game, and I, I, I didn't mention it earlier, I will now, talking about how successful he's been as the manager of Manchester United, yeah. that only Jurgen, uh, that Pep Guardiola, Pep Guardiola has, has, has won yeah. more, and that he, he, he'd won more than Jurgen Klopp in the last two years. I mean, that's his... That's his... Um, I can understand them saying it because it's kind of leverage in his favour. I tell you what, sorry, it's his Benitez moment. Yes, it is. Last (laughs) minute, he mentioned fact. Yeah, it's a fact that I am. Last manager of those two teams that did that was Benitez. But in all honesty, in all honesty, I mean, your bread and butter is your week-to-week games in the Premier League. It's the Premier Premier League. The Premier League. And Manchester United, okay, expectation is still there, and rightly so. It's still one of the biggest clubs in the world is that they should be competing at that top end of the table season on season I understand that. But for him, winning the Cups is just papered over the cracks yes. to it. An eight play def- FA Cup should definitely. Have been in that I mean, you can, you can end been up... been in the FA Cup final. We, no, I've said that no, no, no. But, they, but they won it. But it can paper over the cracks. And well, you can has. end up in the final of a, of a Cup. I mean, we've done it where we've gone through the third round, fourth Everyone's round, fifth round, quarterfinals, and you haven't really played anyone, or you've certainly played teams you'd no. have expected to beat. And you're in the final, and then it's open, and then you win it. And, you know, I'm not going to take them achievements away from him. He's won the Cups. But for me, it's just papered over the cracks, and there's so much wrong. Do you know what? I remember sitting here with you many years ago and t- talked about United. You say expectations still there. I don't know if it is, Jason. Really, I, d- I really don't know if it is. Anyone who expects them but to as win a club, the title, Andy, it's expectation, yeah, isn't it? They expects everyone to tell us parking mad. As far as I'm concerned, <laughs> oh, I'm seriously. <laughs> the, the, uh, what we've seen this season, not not a chance. No, not of course chance. not. Everyone never gets much chance. To win at Southampton might be about <laughs> just no. about no. the expectation. No, no, okay, at the minute. no, what I'm saying, but you and I were sat here one year, and I remember, I think it was, I don't know if it was Barnes we were, it was, it was or a, a foreign journalist, and we were talking about Liverpool, and he turned to us and said, you know what, in, in Europe, Liverpool is not regarded as a destination anymore, European destination, right? The times we're having. I think that's where United are right now. I don't think people look at him and think Champions League, well, Champions I League, Champions League. Quoted you Graham Sinessa's column from the Daily Mail coming into the show today. He says that they've been buying players other teams don't want, which I, I think I, I, I concur. I mean, I spoke to Graham last week. He may have concluded from the conversation that that's the case. But um, 
But they've spent 200 million. Yeah, 200. That's stunning. I heard from Andy Kerr at halftime say a fan had just said to him, and we've gone backwards. We're not as good. <laughs> have they? Yeah, they haven't gone forward, that's for sure. So at best, it's static. You know, uh, no improvement. You see the style of football. I don't see a proper style of football. Arno Slot on the other side at Liverpool has been there three games. You see you what's see. happening. Um, so whether or not you have injuries in training, you're supposed to do that, and we don't see the improvement. For me, I, I said that before, the defending is shocking. I mean, he's a transitional manager, isn't he? That's his tactics. He wants to play on the break. That's, that's, well, they've, they've lost, that's how he wants to play. What was the last the team that did that, that won the Premier League? Leicester? Probably. Lack, lack, less, less possession, yeah. With what chance? Lack, well, <laughs> but today, if you look at the possession, United are more, more of the ball, slightly. What yeah, chance? Probably did. Ruud van Nistelrooy is in charge when we come Ooh. back from the international break. Are you jumping uh, in conclusion too early? I don't think Ruud would... Take it? Take it. Really? Really? Are you convinced that he would? No, no, I'm not, I'm not no. fully convinced. Because he would if he was offered it. You know he would. He'd have to. He'd have to? He'd have to. So what chance? So you go for in-house uh, solution, which is most likely because I don't know who's on the market right now who could solve these issues, but anyway, we will I find think, out soon. I think from the manager, Andy, I think from the manager's point of view, I th my personal take on it is if they'd have got the man they wanted in the summer, Ten Hag would have been out. I think there was another manager on the cards, but they couldn't but sort the down. deal out. I whether that was Tuchel, whether it was yeah. Tuchel, Southgate, whoever that may be, there was names out there that would fit that mould of a Man United manager. So you're and a Manchester United it. player. You end last season expecting, yeah, because you know yeah. that, that one or two people have been told he's out, mm -hmm. and then the news breaks. They've extended his deal by a year. How do you feel when you report back after the summer? <laughs> Well, in a strange way, Keith, and I know what you're saying, and you're right, there's a lot of players with golf. You're joking. But a lot of these kids have been given an opportunity to play for I'm Manchester United. Ones, yeah. You know, they've been delighted. Lot, and stuff, yeah. The ones that he's brought in and bought himself would we'll be, be all right. probably quite happy he's there. Right? But there would be a, a clutch of players that would do exactly what you've done. But what, we, what we've said, and what I would agree with what we've said for a long time now is, there's a... I think there's a particular type of, and the way that Klopp was a, was a perfect fit for Liverpool when he came in, perfect fit for modern day Liverpool. Manchester United need that fit from someone. It's not him. It really is not him. And I, and I, I don't mean to be cruel, but he's the most uninspiring coach I've ever heard talk. I'm big, big club. I don't find inspiration from him. I don't feel his, his words lift me in any way. And the way that Klopp used to, and I'm saying this as an Evertonian, goodness me, you know, and the way that Guardiola lifts his team, the way Ferguson lifted his team, the way all these great managers lifted their teams, Jason must have played with them as well, and, and Mikel, particularly Fergie, you know, it was, it was these people lifted the clubs and, and were there because they know how to manage a big club. Him and Manchester United just don't fit for me and never have done. Do you know, that, you know when I look at Man United, I, I was just thinking, uh, if you look at Rashford, Rashford, Rashford is a very, very talented footballer, very talented footballer, and we've seen it in spells, possibly down to him sometimes, but I honestly mm. think the manager. And Jadon Sanko, I mean, Jadon Sanko was, the, was arguably one of most sought over, sought sort after football. players. Like we're talking 70, 80, 90, well, how much did he buy for? 90, 73. 70, 80 million? You know, and I, I went to the Paris game against Dortmund, and he was outstanding he was in outstanding. Paris in the semi final. Yeah, outstanding. And how he is not in that Manchester United team is beyond me. Could you see that? Did, did anybody see Manchester United fighting until the end today? No. You see them fighting at the start? No. We didn't feel. But you know, do you know, it's a bit, in, the, in the game we work in now as well, the game we watch now, and it's stats driven to the unbelievable extent. He'll sit there and look at those stats with his, with his guys, his statisticians, and they'll go, oh, 50-50% mm -hmm. possession. So we had the same possession. What were the shots on goal? Oh, pretty similar. We had, we had eight attempts, I think. They had 11, was it? 11? Yeah, 11. 11, eight. OK. How many did we have on target? We had three, boss. Uh, in Liverpool, three. He would go, well, we have... Yeah. So what, do you know what I'm trying to say? Exactly, yeah. 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 Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. It's like he'll always use stats to paint his picture. To paint it that it's not all bad. A better picture. And not the performance. And there's a difference. But stats. The difference between stats 
and a performance. But stats don't show no. in here. They don't no, show No, I think those desire. Manchester United fans will be disinterested in those stats. And, no, and we'll, we'll analyse that performance as we've seen it and know it's not good enough. It's no. nowhere near good enough for Manchester United. Nowhere near. And it hasn't been for quite some time. Salah has been talking to a British broadcaster post-match and has said publicly, this is my last year at the football club. OK. He's <coughs> that. Is it confirmed? It's what he said. Uh, it's all over the socials. Who's he sending a message to? I wonder. Saudis? Everyone. Yeah, he's next club. <laughs> yeah. But he has said, he has said uh, that uh, it's his last year at the club. I mean, are we surprised? No. I, I mean, you asked me before, the three players had a contract. Mm. What do you think? I went, Salah go. Yeah. Van Dijk, yeah. short term, a year or two. Trent, all out, keep him, 26. Yeah. And I think hence the key is a purchase. I mean, because we yeah. talked about that. You know, I, I, I thought they've got those three across the top to play tonight, as good as anything. They're a real threat. Played well again tonight, three of them. Right? You've got Nunes sitting in the background. Yeah, You've got exactly. Gakpo sitting in the background as well. And yet you go and buy another one. And I'm kind of thinking, why? If Salah's yeah. staying, why? But they have, maybe that's the answer I wonder too. whether that's the right thing to have said publicly as he has, this is now my last year. Yeah, timing. Listen, he doesn't have to say it now. He doesn't have to say it at all. I mean, in January he, he comes. He just has. No, I know. I, I agree with you. So mm. I'm saying the timing. I, I don't agree with the timing. But, I mean, some people, different cultures, they, they say I, it, I don't think they? Think really. Different cultures. They and, say and it. They, they, he probably thinks nothing of it. He probably just thinks, well, I'm being truthful. Yeah. You're asking me a question, I'm giving you an answer. And this other, is my last season. The other thing, <laughs> the, go, what? <laughs> the other thing as well, if you, if you think of Mo Sally, let's argue he's on 350 grand a week, which is the rumoured figures. Um, you know, to give him a new deal at that age, that's got to be an improved figure. So it's capped at the minute because he's the highest earner, 350. If they give him more, Trent's in for a new deal, Van Dyke's in for a new deal. All of a sudden, your limit now is at four, 450 grand. Price is his knowledge, contractual uh, yes. details and all sorts. Yes, I mean, you can give him a nine years contract. <laughs> there you go. Just <laughs> spread it over Chelsea. nine years. Maybe he's still at Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> They'll take him. <laughs> Smiles uh, from the Liverpool dressing room and more reaction to come. And you can understand why. And we were at Ipswich on the opening day uh, for Match Day Live. Uh, we both covered the game against Brentford last week and we both said, well, this will be interesting today. Could you have envisaged that going that well for Liverpool? No, I mean, it's been perfect, hasn't it, right? The way from, from the start of the season. OK, it's only three games, but we looked at the results there. 2-0, 2-0, 3-0, not conceding anything. You know, not conceding hardly any chances. Alisson's made one or two saves there today. But when you come to Old Trafford, you expect your goalkeeper to have to put in a really good performance. He's only had one or two saves. Um, they've looked very efficient, very effective. Um, and their players, their attacking players, are still scoring goals. You know, when you try to change it slightly to be a little bit more structured and a little bit safer, then sometimes you can lose that edge up front. But they look as, as rampant as they've always done. And I think what put into perspective when, where we were sitting, we saw Nunes and Gakpo warm up in front of us and come on. Chiesi was sitting behind us. <laughs> and Liverpool have six when they're fit forwards going for three places uh, I was just uh, exactly what I was thinking of when you see the squad the first 11 was brilliant and probably that was probably their easiest game out of the three they've had um, and then we saw the subs warm up go past it I thought wow th this is a proper squad of players and he's I think he's been quite fortunate to walk into that of course he's got to put his own stamp on it and I'm sure he will do and we've seen the first three games They've looked defensively better, although they did concede a couple of chances. I think Zerk's had a couple of chances where he could have scored. The keeper did make a save. But on the whole, it was a real dominant performance from Liverpool. We talk about the six forwards they've got. They've also got five brilliant midfield players. You think of Curtis Jones, who's not here today. Harvey Elliott, who can come into that. But I think he really likes Anthony. If, if you know in the game, he didn't change Anthony. It was all the forwards. It was the right back. It was the left back. So... But there's a real dominance about that Liverpool squad. They could really challenge for that, for that title this year. Do you know what? Do you think that even I, three games in, yeah? Three games in, yeah. Well, look at it. Before the ball had been kicked, I thought Arsenal might be their year to give City a, a real go and, and possibly go on to win it. But after watching the first three games, I, I think Liverpool could go past Arsenal. And they were up there for a long, a long part of the season last year. They only fell away the last few games. But if they keep that squad together, if they keep the majority of that fit. I think that's a team that can challenge it in, uh, without, a, without a shadow of a doubt. What do you think? I agree. I think Pep Guardiola, if you asked him now who's your biggest danger, yeah. it'd be a toss-up between, you know, 
I think I don't at the think start of the season, Michael, uh, you I think, think it's Liverpool now. Well, yeah, I think at the start of the season he might have said, might have said Arsenal, because you know what you're going to get. Same manager, same players. They've added one or two. You knew what you're going to get. There was a little bit of what's going to happen at, at Liverpool. New manager, you know, is it going to be a totally new style? Are they going to take a while to adapt? All these questions. Of course, the one good thing from Liverpool's point of view is they kept the squad. You know, there was hardly any outgoings. OK, no incomes, incomes as well, hardly. But it was, a, it was still a structured... And he was walking into a squad that's absolutely in the guts of their careers. You know, all the big players are uh, at the absolute, you know, peak of their powers. So... But there were questions, but having seen three games, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but after three games, you look at that and think, wow, it's going to take a special team to stop them. They, you know, they've just swatted Manchester United aside. That team from Manchester United, OK, didn't play well in it, but Liverpool didn't let them play well. It wasn't an injury-ravaged team at all. It was a good Manchester United team on paper. That was minimum of fuss, swatted aside. Yeah, you'd have to say, apart from Hoyland, that's... United strongest. Luke Shaw, look. yeah. Luke Shaw, yeah. yeah. Maybe Euro, but not far away. It's not. Yeah, Euro as well. Yeah, a, a young kid. We're really not sure what we're gonna, what we're gonna get with them. And I, no, I think the back five could be okay, but I still think in front of that we, we are gonna be sure. You see the area of the pitch. Three goals today were three mistakes by midfield midfield players really. And again, the, the attacking third was just nowhere near the likes of what we've seen today from Liverpool. Marcus Rashford, his, his confidence is shot to pieces when he should be taking people on, he's turning back and it's, it's not like him, Ganacho's still young, we still got to give him time and the, obviously the young lad settling settle is going to take a bit of time. I, I think the biggest thing I noticed from, from being pitch side and, and actually looking at the players, Liverpool look fitter, they look more athletic, but they also have more quality. I, I think that was a concern. I think the likes of Manu might take a bit of time to get going. I thought Bruno Fernandes looks... A bit sluggish, Cirque, obviously in his game, hasn't played. And that was that was a big thing that struck me. Now, we're only early in the season, but there are things that would worry a, a, a team working hard enough behind the scenes to be as fit as they should be. They just didn't look fit enough to Well, me. they've had that many injuries, and they must be playing in, in their mind as well, mustn't they? They've had so many injuries over the last couple of seasons under, under Ten Hag, and that's, that's another problem. And then if you start second-guessing yourself, shall we train, shall we, shall we go a little bit easier? But... You know, no such problems but, for Liverpool. Sorry, Michael, I was going to say as well, they keep bringing centre-halves off. Now, if you've got a centre-half, you can't get through a game. That, that, that's a big concern me. That tells me they're not fit enough straight from the off. You only bring centre-back centre, centre four should always stay together, really. You might bring the odd right-back off here and there if you're resting people. But two centre-halves should be there for the full game. And it's been the first three games now. They've changed centre-backs. How can a centre-back not be fit enough? I know. And, and I wouldn't mind, but that was a problem position. Like, there's so many you yeah. mentioned before the game, Steve, how many different partnerships they've had. So you'd think there'd be one area that they'd want to, to, uh, to, to keep quite stable. And let's get it right. Centre-halves, you look at all the stats, all the numbers, they do less running than anybody on the pitch by the goalkeeper. So it's not like it's a, a huge... Well, that's what I'm saying. Know, they should be there for 90 minutes. If, I'm if sure they can. I don't, know, I don't know why he just keeps chopping and changing it. I mean... No, you can have your excuse of the Euros, can't you? Say so it takes a little bit of time to get going. Of course it is, but Liverpool have players there as well. Other teams have got players there. You well, don't see them struggling. Well, as I said to Michael Wright at the start, that's three games now. He's just made that one alteration, uh, Kwanzaa and Konate, and he's had a real settled look about it, hasn't he? Yeah, and I do like that. Obviously, the games will start coming thick and fast, so it'll be really interesting to see how he uses his squad. However, at the moment, you know, it looks like he's just, you know... We're, 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 I, maybe because he, he's new as well to the to the team, maybe he just wants to get that consistency. So all of a sudden he can get his points across even better than he normally would. But it's very consistent so far. Keep, keep, keep praising on a slot, Michael, because he's joining us. Like he came in at the right time there. <laughs> There we go, the Liverpool supporters still inside the ground. You can hear them singing the name of their new manager. Very well done. How pleasing was that all round for you today? Yeah, very pleasing. I think we saw all the things you want to see. There were difficult moments in the game for us. We started, I think uh, United were very aggressive in the start. We came through that and then we had a goal disallowed. We came through that, so we were mentally really strong today. And with the ball, I think uh, we saw an excellent performance as well. Did you expect it to be that control today? You really had control of the game? Yeah, you hope for it, of course. Um, expect is not the right word. I think I said before the game to the players that there will be difficult moments today and then you have to fight yourself through. So till now with Ipswich and Brentford, we only had the positives and then that you work hard, OK, that I can understand. But I want to see how it is if it's tough. 
And there were tough moments today, and I think we constantly saw how aggressive we were, how, how much we ran without the ball, and uh, deserved to win, I think. Arnie, congratulations. I was just wondering, the three goals that, that Liverpool scored today, all from pressure that you caused uh, mistakes in the midfield, was that a specific target from you today, or is that just how you like your team play, winning the ball in midfield and breaking quick? Yeah, I think the way Liverpool likes to play in general, and, 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 and I'm the same like this so we want to press high as high as we can uh, we know with the type of players we have because they can run very good but if they arrive in the duel they're really strong uh, so the three midfields we have with Maka with Dom and with uh, Ryan they can run and they can arrive in a duel and um, and, they and they kept running so we won the ball back a few times but I think the first goal we scored which was disallowed which came not from a pressing situation mm. my football heart would have loved that goal to count <laughs> unfortunately it didn't <laughs> Yeah, Arne, congratulations again. I think your first 11 are very strong, but also we, we were just sat two clubs walk past. Uh, sorry, warming up and think, that is such a strong squad. That's going to be a tough part of your mm -hmm. job this year to try and keep all them players happy. Yeah, I think it's impossible to keep a player happy if he's not playing. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they now go to the international team, play two games, come back. I think in 21 days we play seven games. Yeah. So the, the schedule is crazy, so you need these amount of players. The good thing for us is that they're all fit, so that's why you see them as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's always. I, I also saw some some players in the dressing room. They were happy, but in a different way than the ones that uh, that played, of course. That's not gone to plan at all. Why has it gone the way that it did? Well, obviously, they they were um, they were in the front foot. I think we we start really well the game. We we got some uh, we got some chances. Uh, we have to be more clinical. We had this in the first game. Uh, we in the first game we made the first two chances we had against Fulham. Also, uh, we need be to be more clinical. They were clinical. They they knew how to 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 make sure that they 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 get into the spaces we we let free for them. Um, and that's it. For you, it's not about picking out individuals or teammates. But did it feel like the goals were self-inflicted today? Their goals. And the goals are always self-inflicted. Uh, either way you want or not, uh, every goal, uh, most of the time, says uh, you need to commit a mistake for give them to give them the goal. Uh, but it's not about that. It's more than that. So we don't we don't have to be here pointing fingers to everyone and saying that uh, you should have done better. You should have done this. You should have done that. It's not going to help us now. Uh, so it's not it's not the point. Yeah, and when you say it was more than that, it was. More more than individuals, what would you say it was? No, no, what I mean is like when you consider goal, you can't, you can't just point at one at one mistake. It's, more than, it's, it's usually more than, more than one. Yeah, right. it's more than that and uh, obviously you, we can say that, yeah, if you, if you lose the ball there in the middle and everything, but what, what's the point now saying that Casemiro lost the ball, Kobe lost the ball, it's, we, then we have to, we're going to lose the ball if we want to take risks. They lost the ball because they wanted to be on the ball, they, they were brave, uh, yeah, they have to do better in that moment, of course they have, as everyone else has, has to do better in many moments but it's part of football they 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 huge players for us and so don't don't make it uh, individual that yeah and what's your role as captain when a guy's made a mistake or had a bad day how, how do you help them ah Cass is uh, it's more ex experienced than me so i don't need i don't need to tell him anything he knows he knows what uh, what football is about and he knows that he's going to get some uh, uh, some something now after the game and everything, but he's, he's, he played for the two best clubs in the world, so he's used to that. So it's not it's not going to be never a problem for him to deal with that. And Kobe is an excellent kid that works a lot, works hard, wants to be on the ball. He's really brave. So I want him to be more times on the ball. I want him to to try more and uh, and and do this uh, this kind of plays because it's part of his game and he's strong. So I don't want them to stop and uh, and now thinking about about the mistake or something. They they don't they don't need. They're huge players for us and they will keep. There's been some positivity, I think, around the club the first couple of weeks. I know you lost to Brighton, but also what the, what the club had done in the transfer market. Is the problem with today, did it feel quite a lot like some of the bad days last season? No, no, they, we don't have to look at the past and think that uh, every time that something happens, it's uh, it's for, for something that we did bad in the past, so it's coming to happen the same again. We just have to make it different, that's it. We lost the game. Uh, congratulations to Liverpool, they were more clinical than us. Uh, I think if, uh, I don't like to talk about stats, but the, the game was tight, but at the end of the day, you score more goals that win the game. So they, they did it, they win the game. Congratulations to them, they were better than us in that aspect, and we have to carry on and understand what we've been joined by the godfather of 
Premier League goalkeepers, Peter Schmeichel, uh, <laughs> who was watching not too far away from us. Um, good to see you. How... Good to see you too. I wish I didn't have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> you, well, you were hoping to be standing here in different circumstances. Yes, uh, how absolutely. difficult a watch was that for uh, you? That was a really, really hard watch. I, I mean... Bruno says a lot of things there, you know, where I'm like, that's not the game that I watched. I, I don't think it was a tight game. I think Liverpool d dominated from, from the very you know, the very first second. Um, when, when you're in the stand and, and watching the game, and not watching, I mean, we, we watch a lot of t uh, games on TV, you don't really see everything that goes on. What really struck me today was how divided Manchester United is as a team. So, at any given point, there's this, this massive gap in the middle of the, the park where you've got four players always stood up front and then you've got the rest trying to defend. At this level, against teams like Liverpool, that's not good enough. That simply is not good enough. I, I won't accuse anybody for, of being lazy, but maybe just not informed enough for what their jobs are on, on, on the team. But that that was really disappointing. Knowing to watch. their role, you mean? Exactly, people. exactly. So, so... On the flip side of that, every time Liverpool lost the ball, you see everyone trying to chase the ball and win it back. And they win it back within five, six seconds. And that's not once in a while, it's every single time. When Manchester United lost the ball, nothing happened. Liverpool were allowed to play. Why is that then? I think that I think it's down to midfield players not playing the position properly. The amount yeah. of the amount of time in the middle of that pitch is vacated is ridiculous. You saw every time they lost the ball. Well, not every time, but three times, three goals, all from midfield areas. Kobe Man who's deep loses the ball. Collier, well, as a young kid, you got to give him a chance, obviously. But he's up. He's almost playing as a number ten, and there's three or four Liverpool players in front of him. All of a sudden, just rampaging on to to the back four. So it's, it's is that ill discipline then in that? It, of course it is, yeah. And in a big game like this, you need to have discipline. You have to have at least two people in the middle of the pitch to play the position properly. Don't even think about getting forward. You, you think about staying there, controlling the game. Don't let them go through us. Don't let them attack onto our defence because they are brilliant. The three midfielders are brilliant. The three centre, the three forwards that they've got are, are, are sensational. So you just mm. you, you can't handle that. You have to play with discipline. Now I think our back four, back five will be okay eventually, but what's in front of it needs sorting out quickly. Yeah. I'll take it one step further up. Uh, you know, when you look at Salah, Diaz. Um, Shotter. They work so hard. I mean, every single time they don't have the ball, they come back and work so hard. I didn't see that from our front three today. I didn't. At times, Bruno realized no one's working hard to get the ball back, so he was coming back. He's at, he was playing more like a striker today with, with Serki up there. That was the idea, that he should be up there. He wasn't supposed to run all the way down and stand in front of the back four. He always, he did he so always does that though, Peter. He's, yeah. always, he's so ill-disciplined in his game. Anyway, he's, but you he could get, come to left back, get the ball, go to right back. Please just play your position. I've said it so many times. But we're used to having white players working back, doubling up with, with the full backs, you know, making sure that, that, that those spaces are, are covered. It was far too easy for Liverpool today to to because Rashford's not running back and Nacho's not running back too much. And when Ganacho was running back, it was kind of like sort of half-hearted, you know, not really doing the right run. Uh, I, 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 you know, I'm a little bit not shocked, but I'm surprised at how it was today, sitting in the stand and watching, having watched the, the previous games on TV where you don't see everything. You can you, you, know, you can point point to little, look at little things that you know when you don't see on TV and see you realise why things are happening because that what you just spotted there you know for instance Rashford not tracking back or Ganacho not tracking back and then that space that that Liverpool was so good at today at exploiting appears and it, it, fair due to Liverpool they played really well today they they took advantage full advantage of what was given to them. Um, but we conceded three goals and three identical mistakes. Midfield players trying to run the... Well, the first one was a pass, a really, really bad pass. It's, 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 the next two was the, exactly the same. Midfield play, players trying to run the ball up. And then when they lost the ball, everybody just stood still. 
If that happened with Liverpool today, everybody would react and straight away come back and, and help the team. And that is what I think that Ten Hag really needs to improve uh, his team on. I, I think that comes down to discipline, though, because once they lose the ball, everybody's out of position. Mm. Now, we, we all know, look, midfield is a big part of the game. It, it, you know, you have to link with your forwards, you have to link with your defence. And the, the midfield is just wrong. It's just so vacant that they do, do not play the position well enough. So if the midfield's not working, everything else can't work. You, you can't bring attackers into the game. Both attackers are so wide. And that's why, you know what disappoints me a little bit? Not so much Casemiro giving the ball away, but his experience. Mm. You know, bring these, for five minutes, bring Rashford in, in next to me. Sometimes you've got three, three, or, three or four players against two midfield players. Bring them in. Get, get Ganacho in for five minutes. Bring, bring um, Rashford in for five minutes. Just settle the game down. Try and work your way into the game. And then all of a sudden, you, you might get a bit of control. Then you can bring your forwards into play. Marcus, go and get back out. Get, get back out wide. We're in control. Everything's okay in here. Now, we can bring the forward player into the game. And on the other hand, when you're in the wrong positions, like we say, the deep midfield player losing the ball, all of a sudden you're onto back four because you're the midfield player who's gone up the pitch when you're not in control of the game and it just leaves a big space right through the middle of you, m- middle of you sorry. And then all of a sudden, decent defenders look bad defenders because they're not being protected. Do, do, do you... So when I hear Ten Hag talk about his, his idea, he talks about he's got a plan and there's a structure and there's discipline that you need to have. Do you see that in the team? Play, uh, well, I, I, I just see it in that plays completely without discipline, mm. more than anything. Do you see the plan? Do you? Uh, at the minute, no. I, I don't see it. I haven't seen it for a while. It, uh, and Have you, you know, seen it at all in a couple of years? I don't understand. No, I, and I don't understand it. You know, I don't understand. So, so when it comes to, so we're, we're th- three nil down. You got a young lad sat there on the bench who uh, who has scored a ton of goals for for the youth teams. With three 0 down, why not put him on instead of he takes Zerki off, he takes the striker off. Why not give him ten minutes? What if he scored? What would that do for the next two months for the team for him? That would give him another option as a manager. Why not try it out? I mean, we in in, in our time we so. Obviously, I was a senior player when, when you went into the team. We had five players, young players, at the same time in the team. And, and sometimes, yes, it didn't work, but only sometimes. But when it works... Slightly different group of players in all fairness. I, I know, you, 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 I know, you, you need you. to try it out. You, if you have him on the bench... Peter, look at the difference yeah. in squads today, though. Yeah, you you think of their first yeah. team, wow, brilliant. Mm. Then you look at the bench. Yeah, I know. Then, then you look at the list, or you, you turn to the right hand side, you look at our bench, you think, what's he going to do? What can he do? Now, this is his third, he's, he's, he's into his third season, yeah. and we've not got them options still. Do you know? The first 11 probably still isn't good enough. They've got Hoyland, who's mm. probably missing. He's probably the only one that is missing. But you, you think about going to young kids, as he says, and you, look, young kids need chances, of, of course they do. But but is today, is today the right place to do it? I don't know, but the squad is, is just far, it's far too light to compete. How can to, it be like compete? that with the money that's been well, spent? That's, and I know. I mean, and I listen and I take your points and, and everything else, but the book ends up having mm. to stop with the manager. It absolutely, if you switch those two managers around and say, right, six months, come and watch again, Pete, you fly over, mm. get in the same seat, six months, having, having managed each team, I, I can pretty much guarantee that that Manchester United team will be a different team. I think we'll, I think it'll be a different team, team but I still think Liverpool would win. Possibly. Mm. What if Ten Hag was managing them? Yeah. That, that, that is some oh, yeah, that's are, a good debate. I just think that's that's the debate. debate I mean, to. Can I just yeah. throw another one in? Um, we saw Manuel Agate introduced to the crowd. He wanted to come over and meet Paul as well. Which um, he, he's which going to have to be some player, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> my question was, what difference is he going to make? Well, I, I think he, he will play the position well. Mm-hmm. He, he still, was, I think he's 23, and he's mm-hmm. had a few clubs which slightly concerns you. But he does play the position well. I don't think he'll vacate vacate that area as much he'll as have we've a bit more discipline. A bit more discipline. He'll plug the gaps. I hope that that's going to be his role I don't think he's going to be the greatest of playmakers I don't think you're looking at a Tony Cruz but he's going to have to sup- he's, he needs discipline and uh, he's obviously seen that already that Casemiro okay not great legs I don't think Mayno as an athlete is that great he relies on more his manipulation of the ball and his quality on the ball so Agate he's got to be everything he's, he's going to have to be some player to make this team 
better. It's, it's a big job he's got in his hands, and I just can't see it. Just on your point there, um, he's cost over £42 million. Since Eric Ten Hag arrived, they're the second biggest spenders behind Chelsea. £540 million pounds yeah. Manchester United have spent since Eric Ten Hag took over. I'm just fed up of, of, of players. It's always the next player coming in. Oh, the next player coming in. and it, it, How many times? Is the next player coming in? Oh, the next player coming in, and it, it, how many times? How many times are we going to stand here and say, "Oh yeah, another player"? Are we going to throw another fifty million, a hundred million? Oh, that'll that'll you know, plug the gap, and now it'll be all right. You know, yeah. Listen, viewers that have watched this show for for quite a while, not cannot believe that, that Eric Ten Hag has, has been given another season. I just I just don't get it. Um, I, I sort of get it for internal reasons. You know, the, the, the new people that have come in all of a sudden, you know, they get two bites of the cherry. Ten Hag was never their pick. So if things go wrong, they can change. And now this is our team now. Whereas if they'd made a change straight away, then all of a sudden the gun is to their head. It's right. Well, now, you know, you've got to sink or swim. But I mean, I still don't. I'd love the, the lads to, to tell me what, what are Manchester? Are, are they a, a, a front foot pressing team? Are they a counter attacking team? <laughs> are they a. I, if somebody asks me, I, I, I still haven't watched them for two and a bit years. These opportunities now, of obviously he comes in, Eric. He comes in with a really, really good reputation. He um, he's allowed to. Sp of obviously he comes in, Eric. He comes in with a really, really good reputation. He um, he's allowed to spend a lot of money, in uh, I mean. He's bringing Casemiro and, and, and Anthony in, which changes the whole club. The structure of the club changes because of that. I think part of the reason that the sale happened was because they had to finance those two, two players. So from that moment on, the club changed. Then you have somebody coming in, running the club. Um, and there's been opportunities to make those changes, make those really, really big statements, saying that we are, these are our standards. And we will not tolerate any less than this. When we lost 4-1 to Crystal Palace, we will not tolerate any less than this. When we lost 4-1 to Crystal Palace here, that was for me, that was a moment where they could have made that big change. What about 4-0 away at Crystal Palace or whatever the score was? Yeah, there? but this was like the, uh, the, four, the, was it the fourth game. It was game? at Selhurst Park, yeah. That was the, the towards uh, the end of last season. Towards the yeah, yeah. So that's four more games, yeah, yeah, yeah. including yeah, yeah. the FA Cup yeah. final. That was at Selhurst. That was so. So when that game was lost, that was the opportunity where they could have said, "This we won't tolerate this." That tolerate this. That would have made everybody who, who's in here today, everybody who loves Man United, understand that now it's a different Manchester United. The the the, the standards they require and start all over again. That was an opportunity. They haven't taken that. They've supported the manager. They've uh, to get somebody else in and start all over again. That was an opportunity. They haven't taken that. They've supported the manager. They've given him money. Now, we've played three games. We've lost two. I don't see the difference. And this is what I, I mean. I, I could nearly cry because of that. Because I, you know, I want this team to but do really, not, really well. They've not only done that, but they've also then gone and got rid of half the backroom. So they've now got two assist, new assistant managers. All the all the medical team have all gone. So it's not only right. They've, they've not only right. They've, they've back, yes, you can continue, but they've now backed him even more and got all his own men around him. So I, I just think they've backed themselves into a right hole now. It's it's worrying. I, I just banging on for years and years and years. It just doesn't seem to be getting any better, and I think it, the book stops at the top, I'm afraid. I've sat with Sir Alex today. It's, it's really sad. I mean, what he did for this football club uh, and, and what, I mean, the, everything that we enjoyed. Yeah. Three of us. Well, you were there as well, by the way. <laughs> the four of us. <laughs> everything that we enjoyed, the, the great <laughs> times, everything. Future, of course, is Manchester United after the international break, trying to bounce back after those two defeats in the opening three games. Now, before we let you go, <laughs> we want to go back to 1998, because oh, no, it's no. not very often you two are together, is it? We did show it to Michael at the top <laughs> oh, of the show. No. Oh, it's not about me, then. This is, this is cruel. This no. is me trying because oh, no, no. it's not very often you two are together, is it? We did show it to Michael at the top oh, of the show. No. Oh, it's not about me then. This is, this is cruel. This no. is me trying to kick you, mate. Watch this for a tackle. Yeah. I've never seen that, by Come the on, way. Then. You can see it now. 
Oh, what are you doing? I slipped. I slipped, <laughs> Pete. I slipped. And you landed on me. I Did think I? I came off worse. Look, see me holding my stomach. Yellow card, Peter. Oh, you got, yeah, you got a yellow card for that, Look didn't you? Look at me slip, though. Slip. Oh, how oh. do you split? <laughs> Peter, you could have done it, mate. You could have the elbow right yeah, I'm, not, I'm not like that. I'm not like that. <laughs> but he is. He <laughs> says he's not like that. Like you that. That's yeah. brilliant. Do you know what? Oh, you got a great That choice. was a yellow card. At yeah. this point, you've already scored. <laughs> yeah. Then you got that yellow card, and then five minutes later, here, no. right here, actually, yeah, exactly, right here. exactly yeah. where we are here. Yeah. It's my finest awesome. moment. You got another you, one. You don't want to see that tuckle either. No. Peter, anyway, can we let Peter <laughs> go now? <laughs> no. The great news is, yeah, you're great friends. That's, that's the good news. We've moved on. <laughs> We've moved yeah. on. Yeah. Good to see you. Thank you very much indeed. Right, more Manchester United reaction on the way because we will hear after. Reports I'm told on social media that Casemiro left this stadium during the second half. Eric Ten Hag has since said in his press conference, I believe, that that didn't happen. But either way, for someone who's won five Champions Leagues, to be playing Liverpool at home and to be taken off at half-time, can you try and put yourself in, in his shoes at that stature of player today? Yeah, look, it, it's difficult for him to take. Of, of course it is, and it, he will be angry. He'd be, be angry at his performance more than anything. We, we've all been there. We've all been there. We've all had terrible halves of football and you, you get taken off halves. I mean, it's, dif it's difficult to recover, but as you said, five Champions League, he's got great experience, been in the best team in the world, probably Real Madrid for some time. So, look, he'll bounce back. He needs help around him. If, if he's going to be playing this team, now you got, might, might be that man. But as I've said numerous times, now, they've got to get the middle of the pitch right, I think, to get everything else in the team right. But I still think there's some way off. And do you know what? I've also said this before, they look fitter, they look stronger. They're obviously better, they're obviously more quality. And this game, it feels like it came too early for Man United. You know, if you, if you get to November time, now look, there's every chance the same thing could happen because of the, the quality they've got. But I just think it came a little bit earlier. And I keep going on about the middle of the pitch being, Michael might disagree, I don't know, being such, a, such an important area. Look at Liverpool's team. The manager didn't bring any three midfield players off and it just works it worked perfectly they've got a great mix they've got legs they've got the ability of McAllister on the ball to slow down to slow things down when he needs to and then you've got the squad of players that he's got the, the pick of the bench to come on and change it up front if it's not quite working you've never seen Liverpool exposed there did you it's because their midfield players are playing the positions probably uh, properly as we've said so many times losing the ball and then the other, did he say double six? I think he said, didn't he? Which is so far away from a double six I've ever seen. If, if I know what a double six is, I'm taking that as two old in midfield players. N none of them old. They almost play as number tens. And once one of them loses possession, like I said before, if it was Casemiro in the first half, Mainu was up the pitch, nowhere to be seen. In his Mainu loses the ball, and we saw a picture of Colley. Colley's playing almost as a number ten. You just you, you can't perform that because at times you are going to lose the ball. Now look, if Liverpool lost the ball, I'd expect them to be in all in the right position. As Peter said, they go hunting the ball down and they get it back quickly. With United, there's nobody there because there's four people stood up the pitch. I'm sure the manager's hoping this new lad coming in will will help with it. Mm, and today, losing the ball in that area of the pitch cost them all the goals, um, which were clinically taken. As Eric Ten Hag said, they were all United mistakes. They were, but as goals you were talking before, a mistake doesn't have to mean a goal. And that's the problem. If they're all out of position, then they can't even rectify a mistake because there's nobody there to rectify it. Um, but from Liverpool's point of view, absolutely brilliant. You know, they were clinical. That was an amazing ball from Mo Salah. On his weak foot, just flipping it. Mistake in the midfield, getting caught on the ball. Um, and this finish, wow. I mean, first time, not an easy finish at all. You're not even facing the goal and he whipped it into the near corner I think the goalkeeper gets his angles wrong here because it doesn't really take a you know a, a such an accurate shot from uh, from Mo Salah but again he gives him the eyes opens the body up whips it round his uh, his body into the near uh, near post and, and Liverpool were, were very clinical I think just going back to your point as well on Casemiro I think the worry for him and the worry for Manchester United for, for, for that matter is if there was other great players playing you know around him and he got dragged off at half time you think okay that this is a five-time Champions League winner. This is one of the most decorated players in history, and he's getting dragged off. You know, um, it, it making his, his would that his, be incredibly no, hard to take if if that and, was you? And, and there's it. another kid basically that's only just just learning about the game, playing next year. So it's not like it's a great midfield, and you're getting taken out of it. That's pretty damning. And 
with Agate, who we met today briefly, coming in, is Casemiro the immediate future for Manchester United from the start in a game like this? Possibly not. And I think that there's a time that comes when... Look, he, he's never had great legs anyway, has he? He's always time that comes when... Look, he, he's never had great legs anyway, has he? He's always been a brilliant pl player of controlling that part of the pitch and, and playing the position brilliant at Real Madrid. Everything he, he, he's not really doing here. Now, I, I, could see, I could see him playing with you guys. I, I, I suppose they've got to try and shore it up somehow, somehow and get, get that position right. But there are games like this, as you mentioned, Steve, there are some games you can play. Look, you get to 33, 34, 35, you think, I can't play in that. I mean, I, when it was me, it was Manchester City. I thought, no, I just, I just don't involve me in that because it'll make us a worse team. It'll be too, too easy to play against. You have to eventually play kids. Well, not so much kids. We have people like Darren Fletcher who play in the middle of the park, uh, G Sun Park, who great legs and get to the ball all the time. But when you look at the bench, there's just not that there. There's not the, the squad depth to actually do it. Now they've got the young kid and they bring him on his Premier League debut. Do you know what? He, he actually did okay. But that, I think that's the most disappointing thing, squad-wise. He's, he's into his third year and the squad just isn't strong enough. That's United, but let's just finish. What a start for Slot and for Liverpool. Incredible, yeah. Yeah, they look efficient, they look assured, and I think it all stems from the manager, Steve. I mean, he's, the way he stands, the way he presents himself, the way he talks, I just think that he's, uh, he's looking like he's got something special. Gentlemen, thank you for your company today. We hope you enjoyed that match day live on the road at Old Trafford. It will be a happy Monday for the Red of Liverpool, not Manchester. Not Manchester, from the three of us. See you soon.